Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and in today's Unity tutorial, we will take a look at scene transitions. So almost all games are composed of several scenes. Even simple arcade-like creations have a main menu, game area, and loose scene. Transitions between these various parts of the game should be smooth and, best case scenario, interesting and pleasing to the eye. A game without scene transitions usually feels unpolished and can break the immersion. With that said, the goal of this video is to bring you through the process in making cool scene transitions, from basic fade in and out scene transitions to cooler, more creative ways of bringing your players from one spot of your game to another. So I have an almost brand new Unity project opened up with these two very simple scenes. One with a bunch of smiley characters enjoying the sun and the other with a sprite depicting these same round fellows but gloomy under the moon. Let's begin by getting our game to transition between these two scenes with a fade in and out animation. So head over to UI and create a brand new canvas. I'll then head over to the canvas scaler and set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Now all UI related to this canvas will properly scale depending on the screen size. Under this canvas, I'll create a panel. This is what we will use to get our scene fading in and out. So let's begin animating this panel. I'll head over to Windows and open up the animation window. All I now need to do is hit the Create Animation button and I'll be prompted to save my animation somewhere in my project. I'll name my first animation Start. To animate in Unity, remember to hit this record button. Now you can animate the object's transform component, colors, opacity, and more. The start animation is what will play when the scene is first loaded. So I want my panel to be pitch black with no transparency when the scene first comes up. And then lower the opacity to zero after one second, the end result being a slow fade out animation. Next up, I'll create a second animation for this panel and call it idle. This is the animation the panel should be playing when the player is exploring the scene. Obviously, we want the panel to be completely hidden at this point. So I'll simply make sure that the object is completely transparent. And finally, we need to make an end animation, which will play just before a new scene is loaded. In this case, I'll crank up the opacity to its max after one second, which will plunge our scene into complete darkness. Quick and very useful tip to keep in mind, to get smooth looking scene transitions, the first frame of the start animation should be the exact same as the last frame of the end animation. Alright, now that we've made our various animations, we need to actually play these at the right time and change scenes. We will do this via code. So let me make a new empty game object called Scene Manager and then make a C -sharp script named Scene Transitions. Drag and drop it onto my newly made object and open it up. First things first, I'll make a public variable of type animator called transition anim. We will drag and drop our panel inside of this empty slot in the inspector in just a moment. In my update function, I'll change scene as soon as the player hits the space key. To do so, I first need to add this unity engine dot scene management namespace. Now we can load new scenes via script. So I'll type inside of that if statement scene manager dot load scene and in the parentheses I must state what scene I would like to load so instead of hard coding that I'll make a public string variable called scene name and copy paste that in the parentheses. This way we can easily edit what scene we would like to load in the inspector. However, if this line of code runs as soon as I hit space, we won't have time to play our end animation for our smooth scene transition. What we need to do is wait one or two seconds, so just enough time for our end animation to play and then change scene. We can do this really easily using coroutines, which basically act as functions, except you can wait X amount of seconds between lines of code. The syntax for coroutines may look a little alien, but once you get used to it, it's a piece of cake. 
So I'll type I enumerator and then give my coroutine a name. I'll call it load scene. As soon as this coroutine is called, I want my end animation to play. To do so, let's type transition anim dot set trigger end. I'll then type yield return new wait for seconds and in the parentheses type 1.5 which means I want to wait 1.5 seconds before running the next lines of code. In this case, the line which will change scene. I'll now call the coroutine as soon as I hit space using start coroutine and then typing in its name. Make sure to properly type in those parentheses. Saving my script and heading back into Unity, I'll drag and drop my panel inside of the transition anim empty slot and type in scene 2 for the scene name because that's the exact name of the scene I wish to transition to. Make sure to drag and drop all your scenes inside of the build settings or Unity will throw you a nasty bug. Last but not least, we must select our panel and head over to the animator window, which you can find right here. There I'll make sure that my start animation will play first, and then I'll right click on it and choose make transition. I'll make a transition between my start and idle animation. I'll also make one between my idle and end animation. This one with a trigger parameter that I'll create right now called end. So in short, this end animation will play as soon as I say so via script using the set trigger function. All I now need to do is copy my canvas and scene manager and paste them inside of my second scene, simply changing the scene name to scene 1, since I want to transition to that scene from scene 2. Oh, and also don't forget to uncheck loop time for both the start and end animations, since we don't want those playing again and again, but only once. Awesome. I can now hit play and have fun smoothly transitioning from one scene to another. Cool. It's now time to create some more exotic scene transitions. For example, this funny circular one. All I did here was make an image UI inside of my canvas with this simple circle sprite. I then created a new animation, calling the first one start and having my circle slowly scale down to a scale of zero. For idle, I left my circle at a scale of zero on all three axes. And finally, for the end animation, I scaled up my circle into it filled up the screen, keeping in mind that the first frame of the start animation should be the exact same as the last frame of the end animation. Once those animations are made, simply set up your animator the same way as with the fade panel, making a trigger parameter called end, and lastly drag and drop this circle inside of the transition anim empty slot. Copy paste all that in the second scene. Hit play and there we go, a brand new cool scene transition. You can of course make scene transitions using multiple sprites, like I did for example right here with these joining spikes. When doing so, add the animator component to an empty game object and parent all the sprites you wish to animate to that empty game object. The process is then the exact same as with the other two scene transitions. And that will mark the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and will now populate your games with cool, smooth looking scene transitions. If you enjoyed the content and are looking forward to seeing plenty more don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's so appreciated and encouraging. Alright, have a great day. Stay tuned. Cheers.